welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. And today we're going to be reacting to uh, some news that came out not too long ago and it was the congressional hearing and it was a briefing on Jammu and Kashmir and it kind of um, went a little bit different than we anticipated and some of you guys made comments about having us um, react on it so we found some clips and we're gonna give you a little enlightenment on what went on here in the US at this briefing so let's start it up Bungie. Yes. so the congressional briefing on Jammu and Kashmir there were 11 Democrats and three Republicans some of the US congressmen backed out they asked India to give free access to journalists and US Congress members India media writers criticized the composition of the hearing. Ali and Omar referred to the situation as genocide impending, personally targeting Prime Minister Modi. KOA uh, said the hearing left out one of the indigenous races of Jammu and Kashmir against whom human rights violations have been committed for the last 30 years. The hearing was anti Hindu sentiments. The entire uh congressional hearing was uh, prejudiced, biased, uh, and uh, also a setup exactly. against uh, not just uh, me, but India uh, as well, and in favor mm -hmm. of Pakistan. So what's happened? Let's see. And I think we have to understand the situation is in Kashmir as part of an overall Hindu nationalism what? project of the PJP. So my first question to you is about the right of self-determination. Is the United States committed to emphasizing the centrality of Kashmir voices in determining the future of the Jammu and Kashmiri people? I would disagree with the characterization of, of the that we don't have a values-based uh, relationship with the government of Prime Minister Modi. And I would just underscore that Prime Minister Modi came in a consecutive term. He achieved a majority vote in a very uh, uh, diverse um, uh, We can, we can agree body. to disagree on that. I just would like to understand if we are and going then, to centralize the voices of the Kashmiri and... But just to yeah. provide context, I mean, the actions he took were approved in, in Parliament, including by members of the opposition. The Supreme Court is reviewing that decision. The High Court is reviewing habeas corpus petitions. The, the institutions of India's democracy are exactly. working. We absolutely believe that a Kashmiri's voice needs to be heard, that in any uh, restoration, uh, when there is restoration of a political, of an assembly, when there are state assembly elections, you know, that, that's the way for Kashmiris to be able to register uh, their, their views, also in peaceful assembly. And so I think the concern over the restrictions on movement and, and what we've seen over the last 78 days is that that ability to protest peacefully um, has been difficult for Kashmiris to exercise. Yeah. I mean, and the part of the reason I asked and the part of the reason I emphasize the context of the larger PGP project is because I think in both cases, the impunity we have seen for crimes against Muslims under the... Oh PJP um, was warming for such worse things to come. In Assam, almost two million people are being asked to affirmably approve their citizenship. Uh, as my colleague and the chairman said, um, they've, there have been official statements to the effect that no Buddhist, Christian, Sikh, or Jain refugees need to worry about their status. And so this is a clear anti-Muslim program. And I'm sure you've seen the same reports that the Indian government is starting to build camps in Assam, presumably to hold those who are unable to prove their citizenship. This is how the Rohingya genocide started. At what point do we no longer share values with India? Are we waiting for the Muslims in Assam to be put in those camps? The, um, the certification of citizenship in Assam dates to a 2013 Supreme Court ruling that ordered the government to do so. 
um, to address questions of illegal immigration. Like uh, the process, the which continues to unfold and continues to be challenged in the court, um, it now has 1.9 million people who have not been certified. And that includes both Muslims and Hindus. There are 300 appeal panels that are being set up for those individuals to uh, to uh, appeal th this uh, determination. And as my colleague stated, we're concerned that many of these individuals who may not have have the wealth or the education to successfully uh, be able to document their citizenship are vulnerable. Um, we will continue to watch this very closely, but I would stress that the, the appeal process is still open. The judicial process is still working in the India. And as a democracy, we India. respect other democracies' abilities to self-police and self-regulate. And so this process is underway. Our voices have been heard. Your voice is going to be heard. Obviously, there's international attention uh, focused on this national uh, uh, citizenship registration. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is a really important discussion, and I'm I'm glad we're we're having it. Uh, Ms. Singh, as a report, a reporter's job is to find the objective truth about what's happening and report it to the public. You have an enormous audience at the Times of India, and you have an enormous responsibility to get it right. I'm aware of how the narrative shaped by reporting can distort the truth. I'm also very aware of how it could be limited to sharing only the official side of the story. The press at its worst, worst when it is uh, a mouthpiece for a government. In your version of the story, the only problems in Kashmir are caused by what you call militants. The only people protesting what to break away from India and are all nefariously backed by Pakistan. You also make the incredible dubious claim that the Indian government's crackdown in Kashmir is good for human rights. If it was good for human rights, Ms. Singh, it wouldn't be happening in, wasn't secret. Happening in secret. You make what I might call a feminist case for the occupation of Kashmir and the communication shutdowns saying it would be better for women. Dr. Chan. As the co chair of the Initiative it. of Conflict, She's Gender, and pe People's Rights at the University of California, Berkeley, I would say you might be an expert on this particular issue. Do you agree with Ms. Singh's assessment, assertion that what's happening in Kashmir since August has been good for women's rights? Uh, no. Absolutely not. Uh, as you said yourself, if it were good for anybody, we would announce it. It would be announced to the world. It would be free. We would be able to go there, right? We would be able to enjoy it. And most importantly, the people that it's being done to would be appreciative. We have not had Kashmiris in Kashmir be appreciative. They have said they felt like they were being caged. They have said that their rights were being revoked. They're terrified because when we talk about human rights, in, the, in, in, the, in this instance with the BJP government, we also need to understand their ideology yeah. because there is an ideological platform and assertion through which and because of which human rights are being violated. And if we simply focus on the human rights and try to ameliorate what is actually not working, it will not work because their mandate for the first time in India openly is to render India into a Hindu yeah, state. No. So they allowed only 30 minutes from the total two hours for those defending India. It was definitely biased, more against India and pro-Pakistan. Uh, Democrats alienated minority Indians. So when the situation is shaky, they want to go visit. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard has been marginalized by uh, Dem machine calling her a Russian puppet none of the Democrats recognize the terror threat from Pakistan so in these hearings they need to have some consequences can India do better at these types of hearings of course India needs to persuade people like Tulsi Gabbard and other Republicans to join notified but in the US beforehand so they can let voices be heard to the representatives and get somebody but like Sashi Thoreau to speak at these hearings um, how can the United States do better? Balance both sides of the argument, give India time to speak. Um, this hearing demonstrates India's democracy is flourishing. Um, it's not Hindu-based, as claimed. 
since the East restrictions violence has returned. Many immigrants have been slaughtered. Imran Khan's famously said, once the curfew is lifted, there will be a bloodbath. So who was most critical of India's actions? These are some of your representatives that you need to call, mail, email, and let them know the facts, the Indian side on Jammu and Kashmir issue, so that next time you can put your country first and foremost. Wow, I really think this showed definitely one side of the story. It definitely, they didn't give India long enough time to answer and they kind of cut them off during some of the responses. And they really needed some stronger voices to get up there and speak for India. Um, you know, they the speakers that did get a chance to speak were very soft-spoken and I don't think they were really hitting the points and um, you know there was a lot of talk of you know genocide and you know voices not being heard and but like she said India is the largest democracy it went through the court systems it's going through constitutionally and it's you got to give them some time to work the things out you know, when in the history of India have you ever seen them doing genocide on anyone? It's always they've been attacked from every corner of the world in every direction, but they have never attacked anyone else. And there's never been a genocide in the history books. India is about peace and love. That and diversity and democracy these are the things that they've given back to the world gandhi and you know so many great things this is not one of them this is something that they are working on as a democracy there's going to be some setbacks you know as the media has been kind of portraying this in a bad light i feel like countries have been putting pressure on different sides of India and India hasn't really spoken loudly about this they need to be the voice of the the majority needs to speak loud but because of that they're you know trying to work things out within India and and they start to ease the restrictions probably because of the tensions and the media outside India you know putting pressure on them and now terrorists are attacking civilians again so there you need to let the democracy kind of work itself out okay you want to keep an eye on it and make sure things are going good but you need to let the democracy the largest democracy in the world work it out democratically they are going through the system the system is still working they've said that many times already they're trying to put everything in place to make German Kashmir an integral part of India like it is and have great things for it as the rest of part of India. You know, bring in more jobs and build up the economy there. You know, Modi was talking about, you know, um, apples and trade and stuff. So there's a lot of good. They, they have a lot of good intentions going in there and making it better and making it one country, one law, part of India, the way the rest of the India has been brought, and it will be good in the end, but you need to back up Modi, you need to back up these articles, and for the people here in the U.S., the Democrats seem to have gone on a completely different war path uh, against India for some reason. Um, I'm not sure why, but I do know that that has kind of thrown our votes out the window a little bit. So I hope you guys here in the U.S. can find some of these congressmen. And if they have a stand with India, make sure they're at these hearings. Make sure that there's some representative that can defend India. You know, we just did a video about the majority is silent most of the time, you know. And so then stuff happens because everybody thinks well it's not me or it doesn't affect me or maybe it won't you know tomorrow will be different well it's not so make sure you get a hold of your congressmen you know your senators the governors and let them know your stand on German Kashmir and what you think as an Indian or as a US citizen what you think because 
right now India's voice is being very quiet on the issue because they want to do it themselves and they're trying to do it the right way but the world is kind of taking a limelight to it and they're it's turning the corner of whoever says what so right now it's um not looking in favor of india at least in the the, the u.s right now in the way the the media is portraying it so we need a bigger voice for india a positive voice for india and we just want what is good for the country and peace so i hope you guys like this and if you like this video don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like it the more youtube will share our videos and don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful family and we'll see you tomorrow bye, bye.